Hey everyone, my name is Ryan Mentz, and today I just want to go over some images that I took late last month in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Um, I went on a trip with three other really talented photographers. So I went with uh, Nick Page, Mark Smith, and Charlie Savely. And Nick and Mark, they both have pretty popular YouTube channels. I'm sure you've seen a lot of their videos by now. And then uh, Charlie, she works with the Sony Imaging Collective, so she gets to travel the world. And she takes really great uh, minimalistic landscape and animal photos. And so um, in this video I just want to go over some of the photos I took and kind of explain what I was looking for and kind of why I like them and maybe a little behind the scenes of what the trip was like. So let's get started. So almost all these shots are going to be taken with the A7R4 and the 200-600 setup. Um, except for a few that are iPhone shots, and uh, there's one that's an A7R3 and uh, the new 35mm 1.8. Otherwise, um, this is the setup I own, and uh, as luck would have it, I didn't get the back order on time from B&H, so I ended up having to borrow uh, the same exact camera and lens combo from Sony during the event. But uh, as soon as I came home, I had this waiting for me, so... Um, even before uh, in Jackson Hole, I've been shooting with the uh, 200 600 and the A7R4 before. Um, I did it a little bit in Oregon um, during Condo. And uh, it's a setup that I really come to appreciate because you can just travel so easily with it and you still have uh, a very powerful uh, lens that uh, combined with the crop ability of 61 megapixels in the camera. Um, it's not like anything else I've ever been able to use. So I actually ended up selling my Canon 1DX and 500 f4 for this setup. And the difference, um, I feel like I am more capable to get uh, better photos or photos that weren't achievable because I'd have, you know, that, that camera on a tripod. Whereas this one, it's just... I haven't put it on a tripod once yet, and it's just perfect being handheld. And then super quick thanks to Narbox for letting me borrow their new uh, Narbox 2.0. I was running out of card space pretty quick with the A7R4, um, shooting 61 megapixels. And so I unloaded a couple cards into this so I could wipe up and keep shooting. So uh, I have to send this back now, but uh, thanks for letting me borrow it. Anyways, this is what I've been using for all these photos you're about to see, except for a couple. Uh, so let's start taking a look here. All right, so first up is this uh, Clark's Nutcracker. And uh, this bird was shot after driving for, I don't know, probably like an hour and a half or so. Um, we were looking out for bigger wildlife, but uh, it was raining and we didn't really see anything. So uh, mostly just stuck inside the car as we were driving along. And we came to this uh, overlook where you could park and there was these uh, pine trees that were sticking up and then the background was super far away. So if you did have birds, which at first we didn't find, um, if you did have birds, you'd have a really great uh, separation from the foreground to the background. So you would be able to create images like this. And uh, we were down there for maybe, I don't know, five, 10 minutes and we were kind of giving up. But then uh, Mark Smith is like, hey, did you see the nutcrackers? And sure enough, they were, after he said that, it just became apparent and they they would not leave the area. So there was probably like four of them or so. And they were just flying between these trees back and forth. And so um, it was kind of uh, on and off raining. And um, it gave us a lot of opportunities actually because we were able to shoot different styles. Um, at least I was doing kind of a closer up and then I was kind of further back and then I was switching between like portrait shots and trying to get them flying and it was pretty cool because the the weather conditions were also changing so it was like hard rain one minute and then the sky opened up and it was kind of sunny and this shot I like this one because um you got the bird straight on which is um some people don't like it some people like the the profile look where they're looking to the side all the time but this one's cool because the symmetry with the pine nut um, in the beak and you can see if you look at it closer on a bigger screen you can see the water droplets on the feathers and it's just uh, it's a cool pose it's kind of got some attitude to it kind of um, cocked to the side which the angle kind of all works together because like you got the the pine tree kind of sloping up and then the the bird kind of fits that same exact angle and then for this one I think I was still up there in the shutter speed so 
Uh, the rain droplets aren't as long as they could be. I think this one is like one four hundredth of a second. And then it was also at uh, f6.3, which is wide open for 600 millimeters. Um, and I think it still works pretty well. Um, I guess if I could nitpick it, I'd probably drop down to like 250. But the stuff was happening pretty fast when they were picking at the pine cones. So uh, you, this pose kind of looks like they were looking at me for a while, but I mean, it was just a split second kind of thing. They might have been in motion as they were making this move too. And then with all the changing conditions and stuff, I was also playing with shutter speed a bit. So this one I think was uh, the 100, the 1 400th of a second, and I was uh, dropping down to, all the way down to 1 60th. And so it kind of gives you a different kind of look with the, the rain falling. So the shots that are 1 60th have very long streaks, whereas this one's a little bit shorter. But um, as long as you can still kind of see a little bit of the streaking, I think that adds a little bit to the atmosphere of the photo. So for post-processing, I didn't do too much of this photo. Um, I remember the pine cones looked kind of yellow, so I added some red into them to uh, kind of brown them up. And then I also uh, threw in some vignetting. Um, so the birds, the the highlight, obviously, of this, of this photo. So um, the vignetting kind of centers around the bird. And then also the slope for the composition, kind of everything draws yourself to the bird. And then uh, moving on to the next one, we got uh, Stellar J. And this is at the same location. So you still got that really nice uh, separation between the background and the foreground, these pine trees. And this one I like, obviously, because the the wings are splayed out like that, and it looks pretty cool. Usually, get like the wings up or down position. You don't really, you don't really see this angle too much. So um, it's not that special of a photo, but it's uh, it's cool to me because we don't have stellars where I live. So um, the first time I photographed one was probably only a few weeks before this, when I was in Bend, Oregon, for Sony Condo, and. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think this photo works vertically too. I ran it on my Instagram stories vertically, I think, and um, just a uh, just a cool looking bird. Um, can't really see the the crest that they have on this, but uh, yeah, I love that bird. <laughs> and then uh, next we have the white crowned sparrow, and this is actually one of the first photos I took on the trip. And so the white crowned sparrow, um, we were at this spot where it's like another um just super easy spot i guess jackson's kind of you know you can basically drive anywhere and then just get out of your car and take a photo and you got just an amazing landscape but uh so this was on the thursday um the day i got there and um i think i wrote about this on my instagram about like uh, going on the strips is pretty intense because you don't know with wildlife. You just don't know if you're going to get a good photo or if you're going to see anything. I mean, you know, common sense would be like, yeah, you're obviously going to see something. You're going to Jackson Hole. But still, there's that like little bit of like, I mean, I'm going on this trip and what if I get absolutely nothing? So it was nice uh, to be able to get this photo and kind of get one nice shot out of the way. Um, Typically, I don't like the man-made structures in my bird photos, but um, I really like the colors of this, so it's I think it kind of defeats it. Also, it's not like a barbed wire fence or something. It's kind of rustic and cool-looking wood. Um, but yeah, I like this photo. I like the pose. Um, I like that the back's facing me, so you can see all the cool patterns on them. And uh, if I can nitpick, I don't like the uh, the dirty beak, but other than that, it's really sharp. It's really cool. Love the colors. And next up we have a moose photo. And I've only seen moose a couple times in the wild when I was a kid. So this is really awesome for me to see. Um, you got the mother looking at the calf. And the calf has a really gnarly uh, gash on its neck. So it kind of looks like an intimate moment between these two. And it's pretty difficult to capture. So as you can see from these foreground trees, uh, these two were just kind of walking along and you kind of had to predict where they were going to be in order to set up a shot. So um, this is also taken uh, at a classic moose jam. So the, <laughs> well, it looks like an intimate moment here. There's also probably like 50 other people taking a photo of the same thing right next to me. So like uh, in Jackson Hall, whenever one person sees wildlife or even if they just stop for any other reason on the side of the road, 
you're gonna have other drivers kind of uh, slowing down and being like, what are they looking at? What are they looking at? And so it ends up, you know, being called the moose jam because people are stopping and stopping and eventually you have a ton of people on the side of the road, either checking out wildlife or looking for something that everyone's asking what's what's going on. So um, it it's a pretty cool photo of me uh, behind the scenes. It might be like, you know, something you scoff at, like huh, they stopped for the, the moose jam. But uh, I don't know. It's cool to have. I like this photo a lot. And this is another photo of the, the calf. The gash is kind of being hidden by the weeds and the, the grass up front, but um, this is the only time I got a nice glance out of the, the young one towards me. So um, you kind of only got one shot for this, and it was really nice. Um, yeah, moose are awesome. I like the, the red stripe on the back too. That's really cool. And next up we have a photo from early, early morning. This is on Saturday. And it was at the Our Lazy S Ranch. And uh, we got a really beautiful horse here that I spent a bit of time for uh, the sun rose. Um, we were in this field with uh, a bunch of different looking horses. So you got like white ones and uh, white and black and gray. And you got this nice horse in front of the landscape. And I like this photo. I like the, the mood to it. I, I purposely kept it more blue to kind of set the set the emotion and tone of the image um and then you got like the blue background right up against the the brown reddish horse which uh is a nice color contrast and it actually uh it looks like it's pretty simple but it's pretty <laughs> these guys are kind of doing their own thing so it's hard to get um like a horse framed up nicely against uh the really cool misty foggy background so this photo was actually taken with the A7R3 with the 35mm 1.8, and I'm sure it was at 1.8 with the, the ISO blasted, but it's a pretty clean image, and I like the, the mood of it all, so um, it's good stuff for me. Alright, and then next up we have uh, this awesome looking elk, and this is also taken at the Arlesias Ranch. Um, it borders up right against the Grand Teton National Park, and they kind of have their own entrance back there. And uh, this is taken about a half hour later from that horse photo. And <laughs> this guy just looks super gnarly. He's been through a lot um, during the rut. He's missing like half its rack. Um, well, I guess it's not missing. It's just, it's just like hanging there. But as you can tell, it was uh, downpouring at this point. And uh, it's slightly out of focus. But uh, I used to put a sharpen to kind of bring it back a little bit. And then... Uh, it's just kind of hard to, to get that focus without going into manual uh, when you got that much rain between the subject and the camera. But uh, at this point, um, it kind of looks like a like a lone bull elk, but there was also some cows and a few other bull elks there in the field with it. And uh, probably got a chance about like five minutes before it hopped the fence. And then we kind of had to follow him into the, the national park at that point. But uh, just a super cool photo. Um, I didn't do too much to it. Oh, I guess I did. Uh, I cloned out. There was like this tree kind of taking up its back end that kind of distracted a lot from the photo. So I took out the, some branches um, at the, the right side of the photo. But uh, other than that, just really cool. And then next you got this awesome photo of uh, the elk bugling. This is waiting for us basically right on the other side of uh, the fence there into the Grand Teton National Park. And uh, this guy just, it's uh, its kind of that classic photo of the, the elk bugling with the, the fog in front of its mouth. Um, I'm really glad I got this photo. Um, like the other ones, this is like right at dawn, so it's uh, I still like 9 billion. But as far as post-processing, um, if I remember correctly, I took out a branch or two and uh, I left it kind of more blue to, again, keep that mood of the early morning. And I accentuated the fog in front of its mouth a little bit more, um, just so you could immediately tell what was going on. Um, just a just a really cool photo. <laughs> and then, then these two. Um, at this point, uh, the ILCP photographer is caught up with us, so there was probably I don't know like thirty people trying to take photos of elk at this point. And as you probably know, um, thirty people trying to take photos of elk isn't. <laughs> too productive but uh these elk were on the other side of a stream and you kind of had a you know find holes in the trees to be able to photograph them so i was fortunate enough to find uh this little 
patch where you could get a glimpse of these elk that are uh, fairly close, but they're again on the other side of some of a stream. So like when I was shooting the sequence, there's like a, a blur of a person kind of getting in front of my lens on the right side. At this point, you kind of knew that uh, elk shooting was pretty much over with that many people. And you just kind of like, we'd, we'd walk a little further and then the elk would obviously walk a little further and we'd walk further and elk would walk further. So um, at that point, kind of started to branch off and kind of look for different things while we were in the park. And here's a kind of a landscape view. This is just shot with my phone because it was just, it's just uh, amazing, but it's kind of probably just everyday life in the Grand Tetons. Like just, you got this uh, clear, crisp, awesome, moody landscape in the foreground. And then in the background, you just got like this crazy mountain range that's kind of like coming and going between the fog layers and just a really cool thing. Here's another photo of uh, the same area. I mean, it's really hard to like keep moving when everything looks so awesome in Jackson Hole. And this photo here is uh, something pretty special to me because this is the first time I've been able to get a nice clear photo of an owl. And uh, I've only seen owls like four times in the wild before this. And they're always like super far away or like super high up and uh, not really anything photogenic. So it was pretty cool. I was like walking under the tree with uh, Mark Smith and one other person and uh, they were in front of me and as I was walking under the tree just this uh, great horned owl just comes and swoops right in front of me from the tree above and just hugs the, the forest floor, takes a steep dive or a steep climb up and uh, I was kind of like hunched over trying to look for where it was going because I was like oh my god oh my god oh my god and so I saw it climb up and uh, I, was, I was like, I think it's in that tree. I'm pretty sure it's in the tree. I hope it's in the tree. So uh, the three of us, we were like slowly walking forward, looking at the tree chops, just like, just kind of like pointing out. I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's in that tree. And so we finally got to the area where I thought it was. And sure enough, uh, it was in the tree. And so <laughs> like um, the other two were still in front of me. And I was just like, couldn't really say anything, so I just like made some like weird noise and got their attention. I was just like, there it is, there it is. And so I was super, I was just like, you know, jumping off the walls at this point. But uh, the other two, I'm sure, have taken plenty of owl photographs, but not me. So I was uh, super excited, I just started blasting away. Um, in this photo, I, I definitely took away a lot of branches. Um, it was kind of, there, there weren't too many that were like overlapping onto the owl, but there was a lot of distracting branches, which um, I took out pretty easily because of the nice, it was a nice separation from the background. So you kind of left over with like this one nice limb and then the, the limb above it kind of uh, frames it a little bit in the photograph and um, the way the composition worked, I like the, the pine tree kind of poking out from the bottom left to kind of anchor everything in and uh, yeah, just uh, brightened up the eyes a little bit. Um, the, the half of its face was in shadow, so I also brightened that. Um, other than that, just a super beautiful bird, and I couldn't be happier to finally have uh, photographed this owl. Uh, next up, we have this hairy woodpecker, which is also taken in uh, roughly around the same area as the owl, and where the, the elk kind of ran off. Um, so when I was there, it was about a week or two out from, you know, the color explosion of autumn in Jackson Hole. But uh, there was a few places where you could kind of catch a little bit of a uh, glimpse of color. So when I saw this hairy woodpecker kind of working up and down the tree, and there's also uh, some sap suckers um, doing the same thing. But uh, in front of the tree, there was also some a little burst of color. So I tried to use that in the composition, um, kind of add some foreground, uh, you know, mystique with the color. So it's kind of nice actually because the uh, the red uh, the red cap for the hairy woodpecker kind of uh, works with the 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 orange looking leaves of the the foreground color. So it kind of all works together. And then uh, I'm pretty sure I actually I'm not pretty sure, but I'm I'm pretty sure that I shot this uh, horizontally and probably cropped it vertically, just because uh, without the grip on the Sony cameras. Um, it's really annoying to shoot vertically, at least for me, at least. But uh, 
with 61 megapixels, if you shoot it horizontally, you can still crop vertically and you get 26 megapixels, which is uh, pretty insane. So you can kind of shoot everything horizontally and then just crop vertically as needed. Um, at least that's kind of what I've been doing, but uh, don't tell anyone. Otherwise, with uh, post-processing, I'm pretty sure I just kind of played with the exposure a little bit. Uh, not too much work needed on anything else. And then uh, next up, we have this cute little uh, least chipmunk. And this is on the rocks next to the Snake River, which is uh, bordering up against Grand Teton National Park. And uh, this guy was uh, pretty cute. Mark Smith was photographing it from the other side, and I was photographing it from this side. And it was kind of giving Mark all the love for a long time. And then for a moment there, it kind of gave me some uh, grooming love on my side before it scurried off. But uh, yeah, you got pretty close to these guys. They Normally, whenever I see chipmunks, you can kind of uh, coerce them into coming closer by uh, faking a food because they're just so trained that way. But um, yeah, this is a cool shot. You know, everyone has a chipmunk photo, but this is my chipmunk photo, so... <laughs> And then uh, this is later on when uh, Nick Page decided to steal a car and uh, we took it for a joyride. Um, actually, uh, Nick borrowed a car and uh, uh, Charlie and Mark were also in it with me. And uh, we were kind of going around the, the dude ranch uh, and we were looking for wildlife or anything. And uh, we found a few more elk that were uh, little hidden gems that weren't scared away from the other people. And they happened to be in like a cow pasture trick to this photo there was a fence in the foreground that I minorly cloned out I was I was kind of waiting for it to get to an area where I didn't have to do too much cloning but uh, there was definitely a fence there to uh, keep the cows in probably in the pasture but is a uh, is a really cool scene where you had this uh, this elk looking straight at you and just kind of a nice mid separation between uh, the other interests which is the cows it kind of a uh, you know, gives you a little uh, play off of that with the elk and then the a good separation between the trees in the background but you can kind of tell, still tell what's going on back there so it's not just a complete wash. And uh, yeah, it's a cool photo for me. And uh, this is also in the Arlesias, well, it wasn't in the, the ranch, it was uh, bordering onto the, the Grand Teton National Park. But uh, we found this like semi-fresh kill. So Mark and I just like walked upon this and he's got like the the skull here and some vertebrae and some bones. And then uh, on the other side of the tree here, you got uh, some pretty gnarly claw marks. And uh, this is Mark's hand kind of uh, demonstrating how big they are. And then this is just uh, another example of just like the the two the two scenarios you got going on here. So you can put your camera slightly up and you got this crazy looking mountainscape. And then you got like pointed down a little bit and you're just in this field with wildlife. So you kind of got like best of both worlds. So, I mean, you want to shoot some landscapes, you want to shoot some wildlife, you know, it's just depending on how you angle your camera, it's pretty crazy. Um, so this is another photo, it's really cool. It's like, looks like I'm in the mountains or something. And, uh, but really I'm just shooting this from, you know, just the, the field where every other photo was taken. Where you just put your camera up a little bit and you got this like snow-capped mountain with the, like really cool looking trees. Here's another one with some fog rolling in. It's just really cool. And uh, this is another instance where you can just point your camera up a little bit and it looks just crazy. So there's a bald eagle flying over the, the mountains here. So um, I think uh, Nick and the others were kind of uh, shooting landscapes at this point. And uh, when we, we saw this bald eagle and yeah, of course I had to, had to take my chance and uh, I don't think at the time I realized I had such a nice photo, but I really like this one. It's it's actually uh, pretty sharp for the, the eagle, um, even though it's really far away. And I think that this photo would look pretty good as a print. Um, Jaren Schneider sent me a message uh, explaining why, you know, like a huge bird in the frame isn't always like the best looking print when it's on a wall. But like when you have a smaller bird like this with a nice landscape with it, um, that's the stuff that, that looks great in prints. Um, this is kind of, uh, looks kind of like the same day, but it's actually, uh, the next day over at a different spot, but, uh, I really like the iridescent playing off the clouds in this one, and you got the dark background of the mountains that kind of gives you a hint of what's going on there, but, uh, 
Yeah, it just kind of looks like uh, like that green tinge into it. It just looks like a magical little cloud just floating there in front of uh, the landscape. I'm actually pretty sure this was shot in front of uh, Mormon Row with those famous barns. But uh, instead of the barns, I was like eyeing up those clouds because they looked pretty sweet. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this photo. Uh, it doesn't look like much probably to some people that just want to glance at it through like Instagram, but I think it would make a pretty cool print. Um, it's got a lot of uh, character to the to the cloud. It kind of makes you just look at it and think. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really nice. I didn't do too much processing other than to uh, really bring out the green color because uh, that's kind of a uh, kind of kind of what gives it the uh, magical qualities, I guess, in my mind when I see this photo. And then lastly, of course, I had to end with a uh, duck photo because ducks are the best thing of all time to photograph. Um, this isn't my best duck photo by any means, but uh, this is a common golden eye, which is on the, one of the ponds at our Lazy S Ranch. And didn't have much opportunity with it, and uh, the light wasn't that great, but uh, I shot it through like a pine tree. That way you kind of got like this uh, natural vignette going on with the, the green on the bottom and a little bit on the top. But uh, I couldn't really get too low, and it was already swimming away. So I was with the other people as well. So I didn't want to hold anyone up by like spending another couple hours there trying to photograph uh, one duck in the harsh sun. But um, yeah, I love uh, I love photographing ducks, and so it's cool to finally get one in uh, Jackson Hole. And I think this is my only one single photograph of a duck there. But uh, it was really cool. Kind of gave me one little glance there, and then it was off. All right, thank you so much for watching. And uh, thanks to Sony, thanks to LCP, thanks to Summit Workshops, thanks to Narbox. And uh, like I said, check out uh, Charlie Savely and Mark Smith and Nick Page's links in the description below. They got really, really great photos and uh, they all teach workshops. They love sharing their knowledge and uh, just really great people to spend a few days with in Jackson Hole.